and welcome to the second tutorial video of basic fishing. Since it is winter time and all I've getting so far on my fishing trip are kawaii, plus the weather was making fishing a bit difficult, I thought of making a kawaii tutorial video. In this video, I'll be going through on how to catch kawaii in a basic way, which may help you to improve your chances on catching a fish or two. Hope you learn a thing or two in this video, and I hope you enjoy my second tutorial. Now before we start this video, I'd like to go over some basic biography on the kawaii, so that the people may have some ideas on what they are like. This is what a kawaii looks like. This is a mature fish, and it has a dark bluish green color running on the top of its body, with rows of spots running on the upper side of its body. This footage shows a juvenile kawaii. This fish has golden bars running on the upper side of its body, and it also has a yellow pectoral fin. The yellow color fades away when it grows bigger. These fish are strong and fast swimmers, and they are great fighters on the line. The kawaii tends to jump and leap out of the water when hooked to get itself free. These fish are predators, and these carnivorous fish usually feed on small fish and crustaceans. Finding kawaii is very easy. These fish are one of the most commonly caught fish around New Zealand, and they are everywhere. Surf beaches, harbors, rocks, walls, and estuaries, as long as they can find enough food to sustain themselves. The average size for kawaii is between 1 and 2.5 kilos, which is between 45 centimeters to 55 centimeters, but they have known to grow a lot bigger. This picture here shows me with my heaviest kawaii caught. It weighed 2.4 kilos and was 54 centimeters long. This picture here showed my longest kawaii caught. It only weighed 2 kilos but it was 57 centimeters long. They also swim in schools to find safety in numbers. So where one kawaii is caught, another one is likely to get hooked. Kawaii is a great fish to target for many beginners. And for me, it's a great fish to catch because they're always on the bite, no matter where I cast my line. Although, sometimes catching them can be a bit of a struggle. And this was back in my novice days, when I was just getting back into fishing again. For its size, it can put a decent bend on the rod. Here in this video, I was pulling this kawaii, which was only 35cm long, but I was surprised to see how hard it was fighting at the end of the line. Now that we got some ideas on what the kawaii's are, we need to find some gears required to catch these fish. However, depending on where you go to target kawaii, finding the appropriate gear can be a bit of a challenge. To break this up, here are the three broad locations you can go to target kawaii. The beach, the wolf, and the rocks. The gear that is required for kawaii is Thankfully, not a specialized type of gear, meaning that you can use the same gear to target different species of fish that is around. For my wolf setup, this is my personal favorite gear to use when targeting for kawaii. This was a Shimano gear, and I found this rod to be perfect to use for many beginners. The rod is a telescopic style, making it very convenient for transportation. The rod is 10 feet long, and this gives me a casting advantage. It's not too big, nor is it too small, which makes it very great to use. The reel is also perfect size to use for both small and big fish. It's pretty light, making it very easy to carry around and it, and it comes full with 20 pound line. The reel is also perfect size to use for both small and big fish. It's pretty light, making it very easy to carry around and it comes full with 20 pound line. For $100, for both the rod and the reel, I highly recommend for many beginners to get this gear because it's an awesome gear to use and it's not even that expensive at all. Another gear I like to use is my Jarvis Walker National. This rod was featured before in my Piper tutorial video. 
This rod was only $50, but so far I had no major issues coming from this gear. I managed to pull in some decent car wire with this setup. The rod is only 6 feet long, but this gives me the freedom to just drop my bait closer around the pier, where I hope some fish will be lurking nearby in search for an easy meal. For surf casting, this is my favorite setup to use. Around the time when I started this channel, this was the only setup gear I had and it was the only one I mostly used. It was a Shakespeare set alpha and it costed me $60. At first, I wasn't a particular fan of the gear, but after a while I managed to get comfortable using it. This is a fiberglass rod, meaning that it is a really flexible rod, which makes it pretty cheap. The reel is designed for casting as you can see, as it has a long spool, that it can hold a lot of line so that you're able to cast out a long way into the water without any problems. Eventually I moved on using a more expensive gear and this is now the gear I am currently using in most of my videos. This gear is from Daiwa and the rod and reel costed me $275 as a combo set. It's a little more expensive but after using cheap setup it felt good to use something different. The reel was a Daiwa Crosscast 6000 and I really like this reel. It can hold a lot of line for casting, it has a good drag and it's a really good quality gear as well. The rod is a Daiwa Crossfire. It's a 13 feet long rod, comes in 3 pieces and this rod is made of graphite. It's a more stiffer than an average fiberglass rod, meaning that the cast goes out a little further. It took me a while to get used to this gear, but now whenever I go fishing, I take this setup whenever I feel like to do long distance casting fishing. On the rocks, I use the same gear I use for, for both wolf and surf casting. This gives me an advantage to cover a lot of grounds when fishing. I can try and target fish that is further away from the shore and cast my line close to the shore and hope to get lucky. I hope by sharing you what gear I personally use, I hope this gives you some ideas on where to start when buying your own gear, and I hope you'll be able to find some good gears to use as well. For hook size, I like to use a lot of variation, mostly because having the right hook size can make a difference or two when targeting kawai. To prevent smaller unwanted species of fish getting caught or damaged, I like to use large suicide hooks ranging from 4 barrel to 6 barrel. Kawais have quite large mouths and even the small fish can get easily hooked on the lips with no problem. As you can see here, I used a 6 barrel hook and caught this kawai that may have been over 30 centimeters with no problem. This kawai was the size of my fingers and yet it was able to get hooked on a hook size around 4 barrels. When I have problems with suicide hooks like getting snagged or fish getting gut hooked, I like to use recurve hooks. The benefits of using recurve hooks are that you don't get the problems when you gut hook a fish. Recurve or circle hooks always get the fish at the corner of the mouth, as you can see here, and this gives me the freedom to use more hooks. My size range for recurve hooks are 2 bar to 4 bar, and sometimes 5 bar if the bite is productive. For the trace, I like to use medium and heavy trace. Around 30 to 50 pounds is what I like to mostly use because I'm fishing in rough terrains where tough trace is required. Having heavy trace also brings other benefits as well. When fishing of a high place like a wolf, it can be a massive challenge to try and lift the heavy fish from a high place with a light line. And yes, this is based on experience I once had. In this video here, I had 30 pound shock leader connected to my main line, which was only 15 pounds, and my trace was also 30 pounds as well, which made lifting up this fish from a high place super easy. While surf casting, having a heavy leader can also be important as well. Here, I have a shock leader of 50 pounds, about two rod lengths attached to my main line, which is only 20 pounds. By having a shock leader, it prevents the line from snapping off and in surf casting, the force required to cast a long distance away with a heavy sinker is very powerful. 
So always be careful when doing long distance casting. And sometimes the unwanted species, like an eagle ray or a stingray, may have a go at the bait instead. So it is handy to have heavy line to prevent the ray from breaking you off too easily. For rigs, this is very easy. I used ledger rigs, flasher rigs, running rigs, pulley rigs, and even sabiki flies to catch kawai. These predatory fish are sight hunters, so having an attractive flasher rig can attract the kawai. For me, I like to use these flasher rigs known as teriki teros. They have been designed for boat fishermen to target terrakis, but they also get different species as well, like fishing in general. Although I have managed to catch a kawai using the gurnet catcher as well. However, even without any special additions, I managed to get good kawai at the end of my line. Ledger rigs are great to use because it's so easy to use, and if you're lucky, you might get two fish on at once. One time, I found a surf popper in the market and added it to my ledger rig, and this also gives a good method to use as well. Because you're fishing with both bait and lure at the same time, this gives the kawai two options to pick from. I managed to hook onto the small kawai using a surf popper, which shows that it does really work. This method is super popular in Australia, and the surf popper has only been in the New Zealand market for not too long. The running rig is simple to make and is the most commonly used rig by many fishermen. For surf casting, I like to use a pulley rig. This rig is designed to be more aerodynamic, so it flies really well in the air and helps getting the bait a little further out in the deepest part of the water as well. Sabiki flies also attract kawai because the sabiki look like the food source that the kawai feed on. But this is only good to target small kawai, and the big kawai can easily break free from the sabiki rig. Plus, the sabiki isn't strong enough to hold a large kawai as well. The other things you need for your kawai fishing is a towel to hold your fish. You also need an ice box or, or bucket or any containers to store your fish away and a tackle box to um, store away your gears as well. Another thing you need is bait which is pretty important. The towel really helps when fishing for kawai because you can wipe your hands up when handling the bait or the kawai itself. Kawais are incredibly slimy because they produce mucus over their bodies to protect themselves against bacteria. To release a kawai, handle it with care, use wet towels or wet hands to handle the fish and release it as soon as possible. I only hold the gills if I wish to keep the fish for food. When targeting kawai, bait is quite important. Kawais are very sensitive to oil and smelly baits and usually come to the bait when they get the chance. I like to vary my bait size when catching kawai because sometimes they can be a bit fussy on the size. In this photo I managed to catch this large kawai using a bait size around the size of my thumbnail. And strangely enough, I also had a large half pilly hanging at the bottom of it which shows that having some different bait size can make a big difference. These fish don't have the powerful crunching jaws of a snapper or the hoovering lips of a yellow eye mullet, so they cannot nibble at the bait. They grab the bait, swallow and swim away with the bait, which always gives an aggressive bend on the rod. So size and presentation can make a difference when catching kawai or any other fish in general. The bait that worked for me when catching kawai is skipjack tuna, but are labeled as panito in the store. Pilchard is also a great bait to use. However, I have caught kawa using squid bait, mussel bait, and mullet bait. The mullet bait you can use frozen, fresh, and salted. I recently started to use bullet tuna for bait, and they seem to be really fond of it as well. As long as the bait isn't too hard or too big, these fish will take the bait. Now here, I'll be talking about some important tips that you may need to know on catching kawa. Kawais love birdie, they can detect a scent trail from a long distance away. So if you're around the rocks, or the wall, or any place where you can put down birdie, try it out and it may improve your chances of catching a kawai or two. Any oily or smelly bait will attract kawai of any size around the area, but these fish can easily disappear as fast as they appear, as if they were ghosts. 
When targeting for kawai, it's always good to try and cast your line in the deep area. But sometimes kawai will also be sticking around the shallow areas as well. Here I had my line 5 yards away from the wolf and managed to get a hook up on a kawai. Bait presentation I think is quite important because you really want the fish to take your bait without trouble. This is how I like to bait up. It's not too broad which makes casting the bait out really easy. Because the last thing I need is the bait to spin around quickly and make the bait look unnatural which may put the fish off. When finding kawai, remember to take your time and try and play with the kawai. By tiring it out, you'll be able to pull in the fish without any trouble. These fish, unlike most fish, will swim in any direction above the surface, and this usually results in nasty tangles. And this is an example of what a kawai can do on a wolf on a busy day. A fish with energy can have the strength to get itself free as you can see here. And if you pull too hard on the rod with a fish with enough energy, it can also rip itself free as well. So make sure to take your time when pulling in kawai. There are no size limit on kawais, but it's common sense to release the small ones, so that they may grow bigger into this larger specimen. Now that we got some ideas on how to catch kawai, I'll be showing you some demonstration footages as well. I was out on a spot around Auckland City and it was a nice sunny day to fish. I decided to use a two hook ledger rig and I was using recurve hooks. I baited up using small cut baits of mullet and casted out my line as far as I can so that I may have a chance to hook on to a large fish. The bite took a little longer than I hoped but eventually I did manage to get a kawai. It's not exactly an impressive sized fish but nevertheless it was the target species. And here is another favorite spot I like to go to whenever I like to do long distance casting. The weather wasn't exactly at its best, but sometimes weathers like this can bring the fish in closer. I got a piece of bullet tuna and I was using two hook rigs and I wrapped it with a bait cotton. The bait cotton prevents the bait from flying off the hook when casting. As always, I like to cast as far as I can into deep water, where the fish is most likely to be. After 15 minutes casting out my first bait, I managed to get a slow hook up, which I didn't expect to happen so soon. But hey, I was happy. As I was weighing the fish in, I knew the fish was big, so I took my time weighing the fish in. If I pull too hard, the hook will come out. While pulling in the fish, the kawai jumped several times around the surface, trying to get herself free. But this fish wasn't escaping today. This fish was 50 centimeters long and weighed 1.5 kilos. And this is a good sized fish to take home and eat. Thank you for watching this video and for those who haven't seen my previous tutorial video, please check it out. Click here or click in the link in the description below. Again, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.